I want to say good morning, everyone. Welcome to Read from the Harvest Community Church. Welcome, YouTube watchers and subscribers. Good morning to you. God bless you. The, the more we get into the book of Corinthians, we're finding out more and more just how uh, the work in ministry and being pastors and just believers, how liberating and the freedom that we have in Christ. You know, the world always going to come against us because we've been snatched out of the world. We've been, been called out of darkness into light. And, you know, the God is still on the throne. He knows everything. He sees everything. And we don't have to continue to succumb to what the world or the things that's happening in the world is going on. Because God wants us to remain faithful in him, to know and to live his word, and to be that unit, that oneness in him. You know, because... Because we are in the body of Christ, we all have to be one in Him in order to maintain the faith that we have in Christ. See, we, we've been redeemed. Each person has been, in the, been redeemed and has accepted Christ. But collectively, the unit and that oneness that we have in Christ, <clears throat> it is so powerful because when, it, when we go through pandemics and and catastrophic things that goes on just this this past couple of weeks with the hurricane, the fire in, in, in uh, California that they can't seem to put out. You know, uh, lives are still being taken uh, just by, and, and again, I, I still believe that it's just not the color of skin. It just so happened that one race seemed to be targeted, mm -hmm. but it's just not black people that are being killed. Yeah. There, there's, there. It's, a, it's across the board, and 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 again, I, I'm not. Yeah. I don't want to sound like that. I'm going against sin is sin. Yeah. This virus does not discriminate, yeah. and sin does not discriminate. We have to wake up to what's really going on. <laughs> this is going to get worse. It's going to get worse. That's why I'm thankful that we no longer in the we no longer of the world. We in it, but we're not of it. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to give in to what's taking place. We continue to cry out to the Lord to extend long suffering and patience. Because if you think God's not judging, you're you're sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. COVID is not God judgment. Yeah. This is a result of sin. Yeah. God is still judging sin itself. So if the Antichrist and the false prophets, which we'll get to them today, if they're already on this earth, they're, say, they're setting up everything for him to reveal himself. So let's not get dismayed because we see things are happening. It's going to get worse. You know, now, we always want to uh, attach things to certain events and dates. Because you hear 2020, 2020 vision, uh, just because you're 2020. Mm -hmm. Or you, you hear just, just di different things. Now, I know you haven't heard this yet, but they say social distance, right? Now think of social for just a second, and then think of six. Social, six. Social security number, six. Now you keep saying six, guess what's embedded in your brain you're hearing? Six, six, six. See, if I go that route, then all of a sudden, oh, he's already here. No, we can't put semantics in what's actually happening. The Satan, God is just as real as, as Satan is. And all Satan is trying to do is get us to turn away from the faith. Believers now, those that don't, do not believe, those are his. Until God draw them to himself and they choose him, they're his children. We was once his children because we was born and shaped into sin. No one had to tell us how to sin. Because we've been pulled out of the light. And this is relevant today because we have to make the scripture applicable for us as we live today. This is what was going on in the church of Corinth. Remember, this was a place where there was wealth. They, Corinth wasn't lacking anything. But what we found out is how God led Paul, and not just Paul, but some of the other apostles, to this region. 
that the gospel came to Corinth. And we know Corinthians are Gentiles. Well, before I go into the lesson, just think about fast for a second. Or think about sayings. When, when, you, when you hear, when someone famous uh, uh, that you hadn't heard about before they became become famous, you'll hear a certain name. And then you may see that person. Oh, they may act well. Or, oh, they can play good sports. Or, oh, they can play music very well. Or, oh, they, they can really sing. Now, before they name became famous, you just treated them like everyone else. Mm -hmm. But once they've got a name, now all of a sudden we're starstruck. Oh, you know, here's such and such. Well, I, I got to go see him. They, they can drop it, man. They can sing. And, and I'm like, okay. But how is it when it comes to truth? How is it when it comes to everlasting? We get tight-lipped. We don't want to share Christ. We sure don't want to say, I love Jesus, in a way where it's expressional, expressionable to where somebody would want to say, man, I sure want to know this, this guy. We won't do it that way. But now, someone that's perishing, that don't have life, we'll gravitate to them. You see how backwards this is and how Satan want to cloud our mind with sin? And, and I'm saying all this because of false teaching. See, false teaching and false prophet is going to go against Christ. Mm -hmm. So the men and women, the men that are preaching Christ, women teaching, when we're, when we're living Christ, truth is always going to be challenged when it comes to the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Because the kingdom of darkness do not want you to know the truth. And once you know the truth, now they want to try, now he wants to try to oppress you by saying, that's not real. You know what you're going through. He wants to mess with your emotions. He wants to mess with your feelings. So this is how we get ensnared with words that's not true. It sounds true, but once you get in, you figure out, oh, this is not true. We won't come out of it. Because see, now he got us emotionally in an emotional state and within our flesh. Now, all of a sudden, we, we gratify our flesh. And once you gratify your flesh, your spirit now, it is grieving and, and you have quenched it. Now, what happens is you want to come out, but you don't know how to come out. So God, as, as you have intercessors praying on your behalf, and then when you hear the word of God, You'll say, I know, but. But that I know, but, that is your flesh talking. Because the, you have suppressed the truth. And until God, until you make that decision and choose to turn away, because repentance is turn away. Turn away not to go back. You don't do 360s, you do 180s. Mm -hmm. So when we come out of sin and God clean us up, God don't start us over. He can continue us on where we left off with him. Because the everlasting life, God has given us this abundant life, just like he did in the church of Corinth. But there's a challenge for Paul, because Paul is having to, not to defend himself, but he is to, he has to be bold, he has to speak true, no. and that boasting, that boasting, that boasting that Paul is referring to, he is boasting about what God, who God is and what he can do. So let's not get this mixed up that he's boasting about himself because he's not. When we read these scriptures, he's always talking about God. Even when we read on last week about the, the jealous, his, his jealous, he was talking about God, not himself. Because yeah. we found out last week, if you envy, that's flesh. That's sinful. There's no reason for none of us to envy. You know why? God has carved us out a blessing just for us. No, now, if you are envious of that, it's going to cost you to murder, and you don't shoot a gun or stab no one because it's in your heart now. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. If our, if our heart is true or true in Christ, then words should come out where it's going to edify, empower, and strengthen, not tear down or kill. So let's not get this all mixed up. 
And these sayings that we're hearing, just seek the scriptures. If it don't say in the scriptures, don't believe it. This word, does, God said his word don't return void. If I'm, saying, if I'm saying something and all of a sudden you're thinking about it and it calls to you, it calls you a reaction in your flesh, yeah. trust me, it's wrong. If it's in your spirit, you're going to gravitate to it. That's going to be joy in your heart. If you question and trying to reason with something, chances are it's just not true. Because everything has to line up with the Word of God. If it does not line up with the Word of God, church, and those that are out there, it's not true. This is what the Bible says to us. I'm not saying this. This is what God says. As we pick up in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, Paul says, for I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most in immediate or eminent apostle, even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifest among you in all things. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're in verse 5, 5 through 7. What Paul is speaking here, he's talking about the apostles before him. That untrained that he's talking about, Jesus taught those apostles. Now, Paul had a knowledge of the law, so it wasn't like he was ignorant to the scripture. What he's talking about is how he is conducting himself. He's preaching the gospel. It's more like He's catching up to them of what they already knew who Christ was and in Christ. Because remember now, they was with him for three years. This is what he's alluding to right here. He's not talking about that he's less than them. Because remember, the road on Damascus, Jesus talked to Paul, just like he called the other apostles. Uh, and, he, and he's not talking about the apostles. And remember, he is talking about the one, the, these false prophets that's within the church. He's not talking to Corinth right here. He's talking to false teachers. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so uh, his, when he says, um, I, I am yet, I am untrained in speech. Remember his missionary journeys. Paul is planting churches. And, and, and as he's starting to experience more and more. He's starting to speak more boldly. This is what he's talking about. He's not talking about he has the lock of knowledge of the gospel. That's not what he's referring to. He was referring to ministry. Mm -hmm. Because remember how, how Peter was prior to him knowing Christ? Yeah. He denied. First of all, he cut the guy ear off in the garden. And then he denied Jesus. But once he was filled with the Holy Spirit, we didn't have that with Peter no yeah. more. This is what Paul is referring to. He's not referring to that he's less. He's referring to they, they birthed the church. He's coming along. Because he was persecuting the church yeah. until the Lord stopped him. Now, when the Lord stopped him, he was three years in Arabia now yeah. to get training. Yeah. So this is what he's referring to. He's not less than them. And matter of fact, when it comes to the law, he no more than them. Yeah. So... Uh, this is again, this is a shot at the, at the false prophets within this church. Verse 8 and 9. <clears throat> I robbed, oh, oh, verse 7, I'm sorry. Did I commit sin in humbling myself that you, you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you free of charge? I robbed of the churches take taking wages from them to minister to you and when I was present with you and in need was I a burden I was a burden to to not to no one for what I lack the brethren who came from Macedonia supply and in everything, I kept myself from being burdensome to you. And so I will keep myself. Now again, 
Paul accusers are saying to them, and we're going to find out why that gift was, was held up. See, these false teachers, and I'm getting ahead, but we're going to read more in depth. These false teachers was in Corinth getting money from the Corinthians because they was mocking or emulating Paul and the rest of the apostles. They was teaching false teaching. Mm -hmm. So what the church of Corinth was, oh, because they said they was, of, they was of God. They never preached Christ. But because they said they was of God, and Corinth now, they're Gentiles. These are Judaizers coming from Jerusalem. And they already knew because they lack of knowledge of the scripture. Well, these Jews, they must be of God. Do you see how Paul's teaching can creep in? That's why we can't keep eyes on man. Because of the deception. If we keep our eyes on the Lord and continue in the faith in the, within the scriptures, how are we going to be misled? Because, see, that's where the Holy Spirit come in. Our teacher is going to teach us in our spirit. He's going to comfort us with truth and then help us not to be ensnared. But if we're not paying attention or we're saying we got it, when, as soon as you say that, you just, that a body that you was in, you step aside. Remember, outside of Christ, we can do nothing. So long as we remain in him, we can do all things in Christ. Why? Because he strengthens us. So, again, this is what he's referring to, and he's calling them out. Now, again, the boasting, Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 8 and 10. It says, for... For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, let anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. This is the boasting Paul is referring to. He's not referring to himself. And then Ephesians 5 and 12. Ephesians 5, 12. Now this is what he says to the Ephesians. And we should take this to heart when it comes to deceitful work. For it is, even, it, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which, they, which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed, are made manifest by light, for whatever makes him, whatever makes manifest is light. So, again, if we have been awakened, as verse 14 would read, if we've been awakened and we're in light, we should, speak, we should be speaking words of light and life. And this word that we should be speaking is Christ and the, and the, and the word of God. Now, again, God is not going to keep us ignorant when it comes to speaking his word. The more we spend time, and again, our flesh don't want to do this. It's not our spirit now. Because if you can recall, let's just go back to the garden for just a second. Jesus told them the spirit was willing, but the flesh is weak. See, when we, when the spirit of God is, is, is once he bring light and he expose everything within us, and we start our, our sanctification and working out our process in salvation. When these things are occur, when they occur, when they happen, we just can't become dormant and complacent. You have to keep moving. God is still moving. Mm -hmm. The preparation of going to heaven is still going forth. See, this train that we want to call it is moving. And guess what? There's no end until sin is done. Yeah. So if we know this to be true, we don't have time to continue in sin. You know why? Because it's going to hold us down. And when, it can't stop us from going to heaven. But what it can do, it can hinder us from blessings. Yeah. Blessings on this side of heaven and blessing on heaven to come. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we have to keep in mind. And do not, those of us that are listening, those of us here, those of us that are out there listening and watching, quit letting the enemy fool you of thinking that you are missing out on something. Yeah. 
You have been given a life of freedom. Sin is the one that holds you hostage. That's what it does. It have you thinking something that's just not true. It's only going to give you part truth. Sin is, you know, you look at the opposite between truth and sin. Truth is going to tell you the truth and then tell you the expectation of what's going to happen to you. Sin won't. Sin will not tell you if you come, you stay with me, you're going to die. Sin ain't going to tell you that. Sin not going to tell you I'm going to, you're going to be miserable. It's not going to tell you that. It's going to send out all the bells and whistles and the glamour. Oh, look at me. It's a party over here. Well, you go over there, party hall. Mm -hmm. Get drunk. Smoke your weed. Your cocaine. Do whatever. It, it's all good. But when it runs out and when you wake up or you done slept with somebody you ain't had no bit of sleeping with, what then? Now I'm hurting. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, wait a minute. All the warning signs was there before. Yeah. See, truth going to keep you on that narrow path of avoiding troubles. See, straight is the way of destruction, but narrow is the path. You know why the path is narrow? You can see everything. You just can't turn back. But straight, when you see straight, it's so many bells and whistles, you're like, ah, oh, ooh, ah, oh, that's what you say. And all this is not another way of false teaching. They, the, the, the Corinthians had salvation. But because the Judaizers came in and told them, well, you know, you need to obey the law now because now that you're believers, this is what God has said. They don't mention Christ now again, but they say, this is what God has said. Yeah. Now, if I hear that and I'm a babe in Christ, well, wait a minute. Paul didn't tell us that. Or Peter didn't tell us that. Or Paul didn't tell us that. Well, maybe they ain't right. This is what Paul's having to fight against away from the church. This is a letter. He's not there. But he's going to come back. So his whole, his whole purpose is, when I come back, I want to be able to fellowship with you. I'm going to deal with these clowns right here. Better lack a term. But deal with this devil. So if, 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 if we're going to deal with the devil, we got to deal with him by the word. That's the only way we can defeat Satan. You can't defeat him any other way. Can't use a gun. Can't use dynamite. It's through prayer and knowing the word of God. Yeah. That is the only way you can defeat him. Now, don't be deceived because we get to this. We already know he used half truth on Eve. Yeah. He caused her to think. And when she thought and she saw, now it's desirable. That's what sin does. Sin want to show you, oh, look. I'm over here. <laughs> it's all right. You know, God will forgive you. See, we try to see Satan of who he is. He's not going to reveal himself. Don't you know he's not going to reveal himself until he's in that temple? Now, if we know this beforehand, what's causing us to remain in sin? Now, believers now. I'm, I'm talking to believers and talking about believers. A sinner that does not know Christ, they're not going to know what I'm talking about yeah. at all. They don't know. That's why the gospel is powerful. And as he's referring this to them, and he's, he's reminding them, you giving your money to the kingdom of darkness? And then look what he said. Paul didn't ask for no money. That should have alarmed you right there. He didn't, alarm, he didn't ask for no money or ask them to take care of him while he was there. That's why he said later in the verse, the brother from Macedonia. Because remember, Paul trait in Acts 18, 1 and 2, when he met Aquila and Priscilla, Priscilla, he was a tent maker. When it comes to ministry and the work in ministry, and this is what we've done and how we've allowed the enemy to creep in. If I am invited to speak at another church, I am not looking to get paid. That's just not biblical. God didn't line us up this way. If, 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 the, if the body wants to bless with a gift, that's fine. But my expectation is to go into fellowship and 
bring a sound and exhorting word of God, not to look for money. We have today prominent, well-known pastors that's going and being invited, and the first thing they ask, they're going to put a salary on it. That's just not, it's church please. That's not of God. That's not of God. Because you cannot, if God has called you out to do this work, yeah. he will make provisions for yeah. you. Yeah. Now, I didn't say that you could not give to the pastor. Yeah. But when it comes to paying to speak the word of God, it doesn't line up with scripture. Yeah. It does not line up with scripture. So when we hear these things and see these things, that's where the enemy is getting us. Oh, I got such and such coming. Well, I'm going to show up for that one because yeah. he, he can really preach. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. If the word of God is sharper than two edged sword mm -hmm. and is preached with exhortation and sound doctrine, mm -hmm. just because I don't have the, main, the name doesn't mean that the sound doctrine of the gospel and the power behind it in Jesus' name yeah. has not went forth. The fame is Jesus Amen. Christ. The fame is the anointed one, yeah. the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Not these names that has these mega churches. And I'm not singling them out. All I'm saying is this, is when we see this and then we say nothing about it. Mm. Because this is the first thing you do. Let a prominent pastor come in. They'll pack the house, as we say. Yeah. And then you'll ask, hey, you know, I didn't get to attend when this 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 person came. How, how was the message? Oh, it's powerful, powerful. Now, wait a minute. We say this now, but God has all the power. Yeah. God has all the authority. Yeah. Now, what power do I actually have? So how are we getting caught up in the name of someone? Versus the name. His name is above every name. Yeah. If I have to go to a message and I have to call that pastor's name, I ain't heard nothing. Mm -hmm. That's just, that. listen, that is heaven's truth. Yeah. It's just true. Because when I hear the word of God, it should quicken my spirit to stay in line and to remain in my position of what Christ has placed me in. Mm -hmm. It is the word. It's the word of God. So if the word of God cannot do this for me, you honestly think that some false prophet or false teacher can help me? Because guess what? Go ahead and give him your money. I said your money. Well, I thought everything was God money. It is God money. But since you're not listening to God, yeah. now you're making it yours. Yeah. So when you give to him, you're giving away from the kingdom. Yeah. See, we don't think that way because we have to be, we, it's that fad that I mentioned. We have to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. You're a part of the body of Christ. Eternity. Everlasting. Because guess what? The prominent names, I can name someone that has passed on, and I'm not saying it was false prophets. Pastor E.B. Hill, Reverend James Cleveland, guys that preach and teach the word. They'll tell you, and I'm just naming off two, but there's many more, and that's all, that's what's on relevant today. But you know who they are. You know the false teachers and you know the real. If I'm invited, I am not expecting nothing but to see God power move in his word. Yeah. That's it. If I'm expecting anything else, the enemy's messing with me. Yeah. Because this word right here, there's no money can compare. Yeah. Compare. All the riches is in the word of God. And Paul was reminding this church to remain in Christ. Verses 10 through 13. As the truth of Christ is in me, no one shall stop me from this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows. But what I do, I also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire to who desire 
an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Now, let's turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. See, Jesus spoke this, and it's amazing how Paul, although he wasn't there, Stop. he used the word, the scripture in itself, to show us how, if we're not paying attention, how we can be ensnared. He says, blessed are you when you are reviled and and pers when they revile and persecute you. And say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they prosecuted, persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is good for no nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. See, there's a warning. Now, he's referring to the apostles, but this is a message. It's for believers. So, we cannot, what we're doing is we're taking what we know in our flesh and we're trying to connect it with our spirit. You know, in the flesh, when somebody talk about you, they don't know you. They just met you. And just think about when you first start school. Now, now if you have uh, in the neighborhood some kids your same age, you're not going to walk in afraid because you know somebody. But say if you go to the school and you don't know nobody, fear going to set in. Your heart going to be beating. It's going to be real fast. And then... Now, for the, young, for, the, for the younger kids, it's overwhelming to them because now I'm having to deal with not only my own peers, but an adult I don't know. So when you go to leave them the first thing, they're going to do, Mommy, Daddy. They don't want to be left because they think something's going to happen. Yeah. It's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. All right? What about when we're a little older? And we move. And we move from our friends. And we in a new school. And it's just like, we work ourselves up before we get there. I wonder how it's going to be. I wonder if I, I'm going to see somebody I'm familiar with. And you get there. And you see nobody. You kind of look around. And you're trying to size people up. I wonder if they're nice. I wonder if my teacher going to be nice. This is what you're thinking within your mind. Then all of a sudden, somebody say hi. And you go, hi, but you're reluctant and you're high. Mm -hmm. And because you're trying to say, okay, what's this about? <laughs> this is how we think now. Until you get to know, you're not going to really let your guard down. Yeah. What if you let your guard down, but the person has sized you up to manipulate and use you, but you don't know? Then all of a sudden, you, you tell them your name, tell them where you're from. And they've been there for a while. They're seasoned there. And they got people following them around. And they troublemakers, if you will. But not getting caught just yet. Mm -hmm. And you give some information that is not, it's not bad information, but they take the information and twist it. And it gets back to you. Because, see, you already assuming, well, this person was nice to me. We possibly could be friends. Mm -hmm. And then they say something to you. You know the first thing you're going to want to do? You want to knock somebody out. That's the first thing. But you're not going to do that. You're going to investigate and say, well, why would you do that? Why would you say that? And that's just not true. And then they tell you, just because I wanted to. Now you want to fight. Mm -hmm. See, it was in you to want to do it. But if they answer to you that way, matter of fact, if you're not careful, you'll throw a punch. Because the first thing you're going to want to do is defend yourself. Mm -hmm. 
You don't know me like that. That's what we say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and when you say that, this is what you do. When you say you don't know me like that, and they keep mouthing off, I'm telling you, it's an it's a, it's a, it, instant reflex. Because see, now you're not thinking true. Just like that. Or just like that. You know why? Because you, you're trying to defend. See, the persecution and reviling against you, they're going against the word. They're going against Christ. You are wearing Christ. So if we are quick to strike, then we, we're, we're, we haven't learned anything yet. And we're not seeing the enemy. The enemy is going to use other people. Yeah, he uses things. But he know at some point, because it changes, the dance change, the music change, the drug change, all this stuff changes. But what he wants to do is he wants to keep people locked up because he know if he keeps people locked up, he'll be able to keep you ensnared or oppressed. Why? Because you're seeing a, a lightness. See, we don't, we don't take to heart of when God brought the animals to Adam, two by two, that they had a lightness. See, that lightness, he knew he had it. It just wasn't manifest yet because he recognized it. Because of that lightness now and what sin has done, it has caused us to go back to. You see why the power of God, when the power of God pull you out, he put you back in the, stand, the, the position of where you've always been. Mm-hmm. He don't look at your past sin because that's what Christ has taken care of. He's taken care of your sins. So he's not looking at that that way. So this is what we're reminded of. And then Acts chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. Acts chapter 8. I mean, chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. And now, everything that I said, listen to this, uh, how, uh, what was going on in uh, the church in Samaria. But there was a certain man called Simeon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great, that to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is great, is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had ast- astonishment or astonished them with his sorcery for a long time. And then from that, drop down to verse 14. Drop down to 14. Now when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy, Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simeon saw that that through the laying on hands of the apostles, laying on on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone of whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this, your wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are poisoned 
by bitterness and bound in iniquity. Then Simeon said, Then Simeon answered and said, Then Simon answered and said, Pray to the Lord for me, that none of the of the things of which you have spoken may come upon me. See, false teaching is going to always make you think of that person. If I have to think of a person other than Christ, something's not right. It's not lining up. Amen? So as we continue, when we hear truth, we should remain in truth. And when we hear false teaching, hold them accountable. Yeah. Ask, ask them. If we're going to ask them, it's not... It, see, this is the thing. Reverencing God and honoring God, you're going to honor Him in the man and woman of God. Mm -hmm. If you're hearing something that's unfamiliar to you, it's okay to ask to show me. Mm -hmm. And then explain. If you're still without understanding, go to someone else. It's not that you're not believing. You're trying to get clarity or understanding. So... When we, if you, if someone come to me and, and, and I'm saying the word of God and they don't have clarity, I will even suggest, you know what, let, let me call such and such or, or another brother or another sister and then let's expound on this more in depth since you want clarity and understanding because it's not mine to prove. If God cannot prove by the way of the Holy Spirit, if he can't do it, I don't have anything. So if I'm trusting him to do it, and believe in him to do it, God will reveal truth if that's what you're seeking for. So if we're not going to hold each other accountable, where did that leave us? We can be deceived. See, accountability, we have been told and taught, well, you don't talk to the pastor this way, or you don't say this to the pastor. If pastor's not saying the truth, you better say something, because God's going to hold you accountable. Hold you accountable. You're hearing the word here. If something's not right, you better speak up. See, there's a warning for preachers about the strict judgment, but it's your responsibility. You remember the movie, A Distant Thunder and Prodigal Planet? Mm -hmm. When the reverend was in there preaching and all he was talking about was philosophy, and then he said, and God will save you. Mm -hmm. That's all he said. What a rapture came and that girl was left and he was left up in that church. She said, what, what, what are you still doing here? And, and this is what you told us. And I believe you. You know what he said to her? You had the Bible. It was your responsibility. I didn't save you. If God knocked on your heart and you believe and accepted him as your Lord and Savior, that's who you should be listening to. Now, when I'm saying that, I'm not talking about you isolate yourself. No, you're part of the body. When we come together to commune and fellowship and eat the word of God, which is bread and water, if it's not sounding or adding up to what he would say, for the love of God, please ask questions. Because it's your responsibility. The Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. Because the word of God in you. If the Holy Spirit's in you, you got Genesis and Revelation. I keep saying it. It's, you just don't know it all yet, but you're learning. Mm -hmm. But it, it's in you. So it's okay to ask questions or get clarity. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20. And this is familiar with us. It goes in before the armor of God. It said, Find my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, the power is in Christ. And his might, he's not going to steer you wrong. He's going to always keep you in the light. And it's always going to be true. Amen? Amen. And uh, verse 14 and 15 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, now Ephesians, listen. Pastor, Ephesians what? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Verse 10. Finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Verse uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15. And look how he finished this out, or finished this saying. And no wonder, for Satan himself transformed himself into an angel of light. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform, them, trans, transform themselves into ministry of righteousness, whose end will be accounted or according to their work. Whose end will be according to their works. See, this is the thing. If Satan is anti-God, he is trying to emulate God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is Satan, then he has a false prophet, and then he has the Antichrist. So the Antichrist, supposedly, is the Holy Spirit. The false prophet is Christ. Now we say, well, wait a minute. I thought Antichrist was uh, was uh, Christ. The Antichrist want to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. And that is the way of Satan. See, Satan, Satan so so dumb, he got that backwards. So, when it comes to truth, are we living the truth? Are we pursuing the truth? Look, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians verses three and four. Second Thessalonians. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day, for that day will will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, and the son of perdition, who oppose. And exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he set sets as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you see how this is where we're headed? But if we're not paying attention to that and thinking it's now, and then God come now, yeah, we need to be asking for Christ to come now. At the same time, it's not yet. The falling away happened when Christ ascended back to heaven. What we see today, we see in more sin or evil happening more than ever. Because yeah. the time that I've been on the earth, there's things happening that just wouldn't happen. Try to leave your door unlocked now. Back then, you could leave your door unlocked. Try to leave somebody something on their porch now. Hmm. Try to think your neighbor not watching you and a steal from you. Whereas time before the neighbor watched your house. Yeah. See, the falling away is already taking place, but he has not revealed himself. So we need to stop trying to promote that it's happening and the mark is already no no. This is going to get worse. That's what he's telling us here in these scriptures. 1 John. 1 John 2. Eighteen through twenty-two. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. See, this is the part that we're missing. You're having false teachers just saying, God, God, God.
they're not mentioning Christ. They're telling you who you are, but if you're not listening, mm -hmm. see, we'll hear and then we'll run with someone else saying. Now, I'll tell you, and I mentioned it last week, a week and a half ago, minding my own business, God just walks up to me, said he was a, a, a pastor of this church, wanted me to tune in on his, 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 uh, his blog. I'm listening to him, misquoted the scripture, and then expounded on it. And I'm like, okay. So why do I need to go back and listen to that? Because a false teacher is always going to refute truth. If you try to tell them the truth, they're going to come up with another scripture and say, so we'll see, that's not what that means. It means this. Well, you know what? If you're not listening to the scripture, how are you going to listen to me? I'm going to remove myself. Just don't go back. Be in prayer. Lord, help them. If, especially if God is not leading me to say anything, what can I do? Now, this is somebody not just new. This is someone that's been pastoring, according to him, over 20 years. 20 years, and you still talking that way? And I'm not coming against him. I mean, I feel bad because you're an error. See, when we say things like that, it's almost like, well, you're just trying to come against me. Because we're not used to truth. When we hear truth, we will go against it. Because the enemy wants you to think you're being attacked. And the only thing he's trying to keep you is from the truth. Yeah. And we have got to get out of this hard-heartedness when it comes to the word of God. Please. God, Jesus did not hesitate coming down on his earth, wrapping himself in flesh. He didn't hesitate with that. Matter of fact, he already knew it. And because of that, it wasn't nothing to him. Why? Because he has all the power. You know how powerful God is. When Jesus said in Matthew 28, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Did Jesus have all power before he died? Amen. He had all power. He laid down his life. Nobody took it. They had to go get Jesus. And Jesus didn't refute them. He went willingly. Now, if you are a known murderer or a known criminal, now I'm not talking about today, because uh, these police officers, they're in a vulnerable position because they just don't know. Fear is causing them to do this. It's the enemy behind this stuff. When we start seeing our race, I'm telling you, you got to see where the enemy is behind this. If you are going to start to shoot me because I'm trying to protect you and I am not saved, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm in my fleshly mind. I'm going to react. I'm going to harm you before you harm me. Yeah. Now, Normally, you'll try to shoot to apprehend. That's not happening today. You're shooting to kill. Yeah. Because when you got a revolver, and the only thing you can do is go pow, 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 and you're watching the, guy got, the person got hit, and you keep shooting, and it's more than one, that's fear. That's torment fear. And as I say this, I already know the hearers and the ones that, well, you just don't know. Let me ask you, how many more people have guns now? Yep. You don't think torment fear is going on? Mm -hmm. Well, I got to protect mine. Well, wait a minute. If you've been purchased and bought with the price, what's yours? Mm -hmm. And keep in mind now, God's not telling us to protect ourselves. Because we know in scripture, if the one that stole, if you knew the thief was coming to steal, you would have protected. Yeah. He didn't say kill the thief. Yeah. You would have protected the belongings. Mm -hmm. So when we start putting out things, because we have to already see the media 
I didn't say the folk and media. The media is set up for the devil's tool. That's his playground. And he repeats the news over and over. You, it's embedded in your brain. And the only thing you can say, did you see what happened? Man, I can't believe it. I wonder what happened. That's what we do. Well, wait a minute. We already been told that this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But we look at that as if, see, we done got this picture of the devil. Because we just read. He appears as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. He's not red. He don't have a tail. Mm -hmm. He don't have horns. Mm -hmm. when, when God is describing him, now remember now, he was the most beautiful angel before he fell. He was, he was head of the choir. Mm -hmm. If God give him the ability to change himself as light, and he still have the capability of doing that, you see why he can deceive? Mm -hmm. It's imperative that we know who we are and whose we are. Mm -hmm. Because if that don't happen, we're going to be deceived, church. Mm -hmm. Those of out there, you're going to be deceived. You honestly think, you honestly think that God want us running around hollering about Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> if we go back, if we go back, and start from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The horrific of people throwing live babies in fire over a false god. Yeah. If we really think that God had to come in and destroy a city because they couldn't keep their natural ability as a man and a woman mm -hmm. to where there's nothing left. There's nothing left but a name. Yeah. And look how we how we reverted to now. At least the man wanted to be a woman and the woman wanted to be a man. Now you're trying to use all the alphabets yeah. and don't know what you are. No, wait a minute. See, we're, we're, we're speaking out on the wrong thing. Yeah. The gospel for believers should be speaking out. There shouldn't be no protest. There should be proclaiming yeah. the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Protesting the world. This world is going to be destroyed. Yep. If in God is not, people say God be allowing things. Mm -mm. God is not going to come in because remember, Mankind is made in his image and his likeness. He gave us a will to choose. We are the one that's going against God because we're being deceived. We are the ones that are being ensnared because we won't listen. We are the ones that's killing each other because we won't listen. We are the ones that's closing churches because we won't listen. How do you expect for God to move and his house is closed? Yeah. Now, I'll say it again. Heaven don't close. Yeah. Doors don't shut. Yeah. But then guess what? There's going to come a time it is going to close yeah. and it is going to shut. Yeah. And there will be a separation, but it's not at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand now. Not later, right now. So what are you going to do with that? Are you going to continue to allow people to come into your life? Because see, what do you think believers are hearing now? The ones that's sitting at the house watching Facebook Live. Yeah. The ones that's sitting in the house and saying, I can look at it later. What do you think that's happening? Yeah. When we already been told, don't forsake the assembly of ourselves. Why? That's to keep the unity. Mm -hmm. We need fellowship with one another. Mm -hmm. You got a sign out there. You know how many people have walked past? Oh, but social distance. Yeah. Six feet apart. Yeah. The healer? The great physician? The miracle worker? Mm -hmm. All power. And we letting 
A virus? A virus? Stop us from serving and worship? You can't tell me you in your quiet time and God ain't saying nothing to you. If you in your quiet time and God saying something to you, you should be finding somewhere to fellowship and hear a word. Because I'm telling you right now, there's no way, there's no way you sitting in the privacy of your home that God is moving on you. How? I didn't say he was taking salvation away. God ordered this. This is what God said. Doesn't mean that you're not saved, but you're being disobedient. The enemy wants the church to fall in place with this one world system. You think giving, you think giving's going on right now? Well, I lost my job, and you know they only paying me so much. I just don't have it. If you got breath in your body, you got it. But what we've done, we've been ensnared and we've fallen away. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. In that same chapter, two chapters over. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confessed that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We'll say that scripture. We'll say this last part. But we don't heed to it. We'll say it and we'll go about our business. No, wait a minute. We just found out he's all power. Mm -hmm. It's his power. Why do we say it and don't believe it? Or say it and don't follow through with it? If we are in Christ's hand, and Christ's hand is in the Father's hand, and no one can snatch us out, what's holding us up? We're hearers mm -hmm. and not doers. Mm -hmm. We're not listening to what we should be listening to. I am not. God has not placed me here to tell you how to live. Yeah. That is the Holy Spirit responsibility. God has placed me here to expound, give sound doctrine, to reprove, and give truth. That is my responsibility. For myself and those that he give me that will listen. And because of that reason, I trust him enough for that. Anything outside of that, I'm going to leave that to God. Mm -hmm. That's God's business. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Knowing what God is doing and can do, all things work together for good to those that love Him. Mm -hmm. And today, is like no other day, the kingdom of heaven is in hand. Mm -hmm. And those of us that are here and listening, if you haven't made a decision out there, the day that you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. If you have not received Christ, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess you with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you have done that, you can join or go to a Bible-believing church where you can get training as a disciple and to become a better witness for Christ to share the gospel. You know, our website, our email address is rthcc. Dot org. You can send prayer requests because we will be praying on your behalf and pray that God will continue to bless you. Today, I'm thankful again that God is who we say he is in our life. God bless you. Father,